come back. So, we are discussing uh, heat exchangers and a very important uh, type of heat exchangers that is uh, fin tube heat exchangers uh, is the topic on which we are uh, spending some time. Uh, as I have told that uh, tubular structure is very common in industry and tubular structure is very common uh, for heat exchangers. And uh, with tubular structure, we can have different type of heat exchanger like uh, tube in tube or double pipe heat exchanger, cell and tube heat exchanger. So, double pipe heat exchanger and cell and tube heat exchangers primarily they are for liquid liquid application. What does it mean? That means that two fluids both of them will be in the uh, both of them will be uh, uh, liquid or liquid phase. Uh, through the central tube one liquid will pass through the cell or through the annular passage uh, another liquid will pass pass but if there is a heat um, requirement of heat transfer between a liquid stream and a gas stream then it would be good that if we can have <coughs> liquid through the tube side and outside the uh, tube we will have gas and uh, uh, gas uh, uh, heat transfer coefficient is small. So, we have to have some augmentation for the gas side. For the gas side, we can have a uh, uh, fin structure on the outside of the tube. And for a circular tube or for uh, that matter tube of any kind of geometry, we can have three types of fins. Fins could be along the axis of the tube number of fins. So, that is called longitudinal fin and already we have seen the analysis of longitudinal fin. The, then fin could, could be in the form of discs, radial discs at different interval, different uh, axial interval these radial discs can be provided on outside of the tube. These are radial fin, we know how to analyze them. But there could be another uh, variation of fin tube heat exchanger which we have mentioned and again I am mentioning because that is important that uh, there could be integral tube uh, sorry integral fin plate which will be pierced by a number of tubes. So, that way we increase the compactness of the heat exchanger. So, if we go to the next slide, in the next slide what we can see different designs of <coughs> Uh, uh, plate fin heat exchanger where the fluid is pa passing through the tube side. So, it is uh, basically plate fins have been used, but we should have mentioned that tube tube is also there. So, plate fin and tube type of heat exchangers. So, uh, you can see uh, the tubes I need not uh, show, uh, I mean uh, it is clear to everybody. So, these are the tubes and here we have got plate fin. Uh, which is of uh, plain plate fin and here we have got wavy plate fin. What is important to note here that tubes are having different kind of arrangement. In this the tubes are in a particular arrangement which is called plain inlined arrangement. In this, uh, this uh, plate is plain, so it is called plain and then it is staggered arrangement. So, you see this is a staggered arrangement. In the first row we have got three tube, in the second row the uh, tubes are slightly uh, shifted uh, from the position of the first row. So, they are staggered and in the second case we have got again wavy inclined uh, that is C and we have got wavy staggered. So, tubes can be arranged in line arrangement and staggered arrangement. Plates can have fin plates can, can have different kind of geometry, plane geometry and wavy geometry has been shown there could be several other kind of geometry. So, with this let us go to <coughs> the next slide. So, here I have uh, um, noted the very important points fin tube heat exchangers are often designed to have fin plates pierced by a number of tubes several fin plates are arranged parallel to each other. So, uh, this is what we will be uh, able to see. So, here you see the plates are arranged parallel to each other. 
So, between two plate there will be a passage through that passage it will be uh, the, the uh, it will be the flow path of the gas stream. But you see this passage is not unobstructed because in between this uh, outer surface of some other tubes are coming. So, this is kind of a passage, this is another kind of a passage which is wavy and this is plane passage something like that we will get. So, uh, if we go back then several fin, fin plates are arranged parallel to each other, two neighboring fin plates constitute a passage for gas flow. Convective heat transfer from the fin plates needs to be determined for, for this the temperature variation of the fin plate is to be determined. So, obviously, the fin plates will have different temperature at different point. Near the tube they will have some temperature suppose hot fluid is passing through the tubes then near the tube they will have higher temperature and away from the tube they will have lower temperature. Then fin plates are basically two dimensional fins where the thickness is so small that the temperature variation across it may be neglected. So, this point if we uh, like to discuss it is like this, uh, the fin plates here again let us go back to the fin plates they are very thin. So, in this direction they have got a large dimension, in this direction they, are, they have got a large dimension, but along this direction the direction of thickness they are very thin. So, we will assume that in the thickness direction there is no variation of temperature, but anyway there will be temperature variation along this direction, temperature variation along this direction. So, it is basically a two dimensional heat transfer in fin which we have not analyzed earlier, earlier we have analyzed fin as one dimensional heat conducting body. <coughs> so, let us go back. So, convective heat transfer is two dimensional <coughs> uh, or rather the temperature distribution is two dimensional. So, accordingly the convective heat transfer will be affected. Fin plates are basically two dimensional fins uh, and we have done so far only one dimensional fin analysis. So, nevertheless analysis of two dimensional fields are difficult for the design of heat exchanger approximate one dimensional calculation is adopted. This is what uh, I am going to talk about in today's lecture. So, these are so crux of the today's uh, discussion is these fins are two dimensional fin. Let us see how to design them with whatever knowledge we are having. We are having the knowledge of analyzing one dimensional fin. So, we will try to adopt that with some sort of a modification. <coughs> <Huh. coughs> Tubes in fin tube heat exchanger are arranged in inline array and staggered array. This I have already shown and discussed. Then two very common cases of inline and uh, uh, two very common cases are inline and staggered array of tubes as shown in the figure. So, previous figure it has been shown in a figure uh, after this we will again show this. Part of the fin plate affected by heat transfer from a particular tube are shown by red line. So, if it is a two dimensional fin then a tube will have heat transfer by conduction or from the tube the thermal energy will spread in the fin uh, by conduction and this will be restricted within a zone. So, that zone is shown by red line as we will see the diagram it will be clear. <coughs> Depending on the tube arrangement, it should be a regular or irregular polygon. So, depending how we are arranging the tube, there could be <coughs> different kind of polygon starting from square, rectangle, etcetera, and <coughs> they could be regular polygon or irregular polygon depending on the arrangement of the tube. The symmetric sector of the polygon is shown by the hatched portion. So, if it is a polygon then there will be different, uh, different lines of symmetry and we will see that there is some sort of a symmetric geometry by, by repeating which we can get the whole of the polygon. So, that is shown by hatched portion. Then these polygonal fins are analyzed by two methods one is equivalent annular method or equivalent annulus method 
and sector method. Here I like to say that one can do a rigorous mathematical analysis by assuming two dimensional heat conduction that is not impossible, but that is very cumbersome and uh, is not convenient to be used for your regular design calculation. So, what we do that we have got one dimensional fin analysis already available, we want to adopt that, but it is a two dimensional fin. So, we have to modify our analysis. So, this modification is done by two different method, one is equivalent annulus method and another is sector method. With this background, let us go back to the sorry, let us proceed to the next slide. <coughs> in equivalent annular method or equivalent annulus method that is also told in some of the books, the polygonal fin is idealized as an annular or radial fin as shown in the figure, the figure we are going to show in the coming slides. So, basically we have got a polygon, okay. so that polygon can be replaced by an equivalent circle. Uh, uh, what is meant by equivalent circle? The area of the polygon and the area of the circle they will be the same. For the given uh, <coughs> tube outer radius, uh, if the tube outer diameter is d, then d is equal to 2 r i, where r i is the outer radius, one can find out the outer radius of the equivalent annulus and the outer radius of the equivalent annulus is denoted as r e. So, basically instead of polygon, now we are getting a, an annular geometry which is having inner radius is equal to r i and outer radius is equal to r e. So, once r i and r e are known, then the fin efficiency can be determined by the usual method for obtaining the efficiency of a circular fin. How to determine the circular fin efficiency? We have seen that generally it comes uh, through Bessel function and again it is complex in regular design, we do not like to use those Bessel function. So, basically there will be some sort of curves or charts, so from there we can do it. Now, with the advent of computing power, probably one can have some sort of a software for calculating the fin efficiency and there may be a better, better method could be adopted which will be slightly more accurate. But so far, what I can suggest that the fin efficiency curves are available, knowing the geometry of the fin and other thermogeometric parameter which is m, already we have defined m one can determine the efficiency of the fin, be it a longitudinal fin or a circular fin. So, for <coughs> n sided regular polygon and if the regular polygon has got one uh, uh, side is equal to a, then the equivalent outer radius of the annulus is given by the formula which is written over here. Okay. So, we are getting R e, R e we are getting R i is a quantity which is given already specified in the design and then we can proceed. So, let us see the diagram here. So, <coughs> whatever uh, uh, fin tube heat exchanger with integral fin plate I have shown, here I am showing some geometric details. Let us say in this case the tubes are in line arranged. So, you see <coughs> that if I if I draw uh, one line, so uh, uh, all the center line of the tubes in this level are falling on this line and uh, in the second row all the center line are falling in this line. So, these are called in line arrangement of tubes. So, the in line arrangement of tube is like this and then uh, one can identify suppose this is a tube and this tube, uh, through this tube some fluid is passing whose temperature is different from air. So, what will happen? Surrounding area of the tube in the fin that will be affected by the, uh, by the 
temperature of the uh, periphery of the tube and the affected area is shown by this red line. So, the effect of the tube will not penetrate in the fin beyond the red line. So, what we can see that if there are large number of tubes which will be there in a big heat exchanger. So, all the tubes will have some sort of a square fin and these red boundaries are also thermally insulating boundaries or adiabatic boundaries. So, there will not be any heat transfer across the uh, or normal to the red boundaries. So, what we can see that our fin plate which was uh, really bit complex to analyze, now it uh, represents a situation where there are number of uh, circular tubes with, with square kind of a <coughs> with square kind of a fin. And again <coughs> the square fin has got different lines of symmetry. So, the shaded zone that is one um, uh, 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 smallest portion of the uh, fin which can be repeated to get the whole area of the fin from the symmetry of the problem from the th th uh, geometrical symmetry and from the thermal symmetry. So, this is inline array of tube and this is how we can get the <coughs> fin around the tube. Generally inline uh, arrangement is defined by two pitches one is longitudinal pitch P L and another is transverse pitch P T. Depending on the process requirement, we can have different values of P L and P T. The particular case has been shown where P L and P T are the same. So, basically we are having an inline square array of tubes in the fin tube heat exchanger. So, let us go to the next slide. So, here I am showing this staggered array. So, you see this is uh, the line of tube. The next line of tube is little bit shifted, center lines of the tubes are little bit shifted. So, this is a staggered array of tube. Uh, this uh, staggered array is uh, drawn in such a way more or less one can imagine that as if the tubes are occupying the apex of some equilateral triangle. So, only one pitch I can define the geometry that is what is p and of course, the diameter of the tube d that is important. So, <coughs> with this I can define the geometry. So, staggered array generally what happens uh, um, let me tell you that why there are two types of arrangement. It has been seen that staggered array generally gives more compactness and more heat transfer could be there the fluid stream which will pass these tubes behind the fluid stream which will pass the tubes. Let us say this is the air flow which is taking place okay. and flow of liquid is normal to the plane of the diagram. So, this is a air flow and that will make some sort of a vortex behind the tube, tube circular tube being a bluff body. So, it will create some sort of a vortex. So, vortex will give some sort of a mixing and then if I have this staggered arrangement we will get some good mixing and this vortex is not directly coming out on the next tube. It is I mean its effect will be felt uh, on the other tube. So, where these uh, vortex are little bit died down. So, we will have a good mixture of uh, kind of uh, good mixture when we are having the staggered tube. So, let us say the inline case is something like this let me draw here. So, the vortex are forming here, vortex is forming here, vortex is forming here, but staggered is something like this. So, vortex is forming here, here, here. So, you can get a better mixing and a better compactness, better uh, heat transfer and compactness in the uh, case of staggered arrangement. So, that is why we have got inline and staggered arrangement. Of course, there are other considerations which are to be uh, fulfilled. So, let us come back to the present configuration. So, heat, here again it is a staggered arrangement and the arrangement is such that uh, each tube occupy the vertex or apex of the vertex of the uh, 
uh, of a equilateral triangle and with a pitch p we can uh, define the geometry. Uh, we can see the shaded portion. So, this shaded portion is repeated to give this polygon which is a regular hexagon. It is shown by red line uh, to indicate that all the fins in this case will be hexagonal fin. So, when we are having this kind of staggered arrangement, then the integral fin plate presents a picture where uh, there are tubes and each tube is surrounded by hexagonal fins. And again, as I have told in the previous case, these surfaces, let us say this surface or this surface, they are adiabatic surface. But in any case, we, we do not know how to analyze a hexagonal fin. So, what we will do? We will have some sort of a circle whose area is equal to the area of the hexagon. So, probably in the drawing it is not uh, that accurate, but the circle area let us say the green circle area and the red hexagon area they are the same. Then we will assume that this central tube is surrounded by a circular fin whose periphery is given by this green line. So, this is what we will do. Okay. So, <coughs> so uh, 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 integral fin plate, fin plate though it gives a different kind of a uh, um, challenge for analyzing the fin, we have got some method of doing it. Let me go back to the heat exchanger diagram, so that I will explain it, uh, I will explain it once again with the help of the heat exchanger diagram. Let me go back to the previous slide, some previous slide and then we will have a here. So, what we can see that so many tubes are there, then in this case case each tube we can assume that in the first case each tube is surrounded by square kind of fin and in this case each tube is surrounded by hexagonal fin. So, this is what we are going to get ultimately. Okay. So, now our analysis has become easy. So, basically then it is a single tube for the heat exchanger what we can do we can take a single tube, single tube is having number of fins at different interval and these fins are not connected with any other thing and only complexity we are having that these fins are not circular fin, these are polygonal fin. So, that is the first uh, resolution or first we resolve that and second what we do here we take little bit of approximation, these polygonal fins whether it is square or rectangle or regular or irregular hexagon, we convert them into equivalent circle. So, now uh, our life is very simple, we know how to determine the efficiency of circular fin and we can proceed. So, uh, that is what we are going to do and then equivalent annulus method I have already anal <coughs> I have already described. So, this is the equivalent annulus method knowing R i and R e. So, basically R i is given by d by 2 and R e is given by the radius of this green cycle circle and from there we can determine the fin efficiency by the usual procedure. <clears throat> then we go to the second method. In the second method, we have got second method is called the sector method. For the sector method, the repetitive part of the polygonal fin is divided into different angular sector as shown in the figure. The figure will follow. For each sector, the inner and outer radii are known that we will also we will see from the uh, diagram or figure. So, the efficiency of a radial fin with these two radii can be calculated. Let the efficiency of the ith sector is eta i and its area is a i. 
then the efficiency of the polygonal fin bisector method is given by this particular formula. Uh, for demonstration or for understanding complete understanding we need to have a figure and then we can go for the figure. So, this is our sector method. So, let us say <coughs> this is the outer diameter of the tube which is given by it, outer uh, so, diameter is given by d and the radius is given by r i and then this is the sector. This sector repeats to give me the polygonal fin. So, what I am doing? Uh, I am dividing this sector sorry dividing this um, uh, symmetric part of the fin into different angular sector. This is one angular sector, this is second, this is third, this is fourth and then this angular sector I am drawing some sort of approximate uh, uh, radial curve or circular curve. So, from here R i is known and from this curve R o is known. So, R e is known. So, knowing R i and R e I can get the efficiency. The point is R e is different for different angular sectors which I have drawn. So, I will have different efficiency and this sectors angular sectors are also having different area. So, combining the area and the efficiency the formula which I have stated with that I can determine the efficiency of the <coughs> of the polygonal fin. So, obvious the obviously the second method the sector method involves more amount of calculation, but it also guarantees better accuracy. So, it is up to you up to the designer which method one will select whether equivalent annular method or equivalent annular method one will select or the sector method one will select whatever it may be we will get the efficiency very close to the actual efficiency which can be obtained by rigorous mathematical analysis. So, <coughs> now we know how to determine the fin efficiency of a circular I mean uh, attached to the outer sur surface of a circular tube. If it is longitudinal fin, we do not have any problem, we have got the formula. If it is radial fin, we do not have any problem, we have got the formula and the chart. And if it is an integral fin plate, then it is a polygonal fin and we are determining approximately its efficiency from the radial fin efficiency. This is what we have, we tried to discuss today. If you have got any confusion or query, come back to the forum and we will try to address that. <coughs> so, with this I like to end today's lecture.